Um, yeah, Shane, we've plenty of questions, uh, plenty of areas of discussion. So I suppose we'll just get started into them. Uh, and I suppose from the presentation, the key thing is, is first of all, register with the Department of Agriculture and uh, and then we'll engage with you to, to take you through the process. Um, so just a few questions that have, that have come in, Shane. Uh, one there on a question come in from somebody that already has a PHR number and will they still need to register if they're importing product from the UK, if they already have a PHR number? Uh, well, no, they, they don't need to register, but one thing I would say definitely is they, they, they would need to update their, their registration. So the way they can do that is if they want to contact us on the plant imports at agriculture.gov.ie and just send us an email uh, and what we will do is we will just check the registration, confirm the registration and we can update it to ensure that they're, that they're registered to be an importer basically. Okay, thanks for that Shane. Um, just one then on, on plants uh, that are currently on the prohibited list uh, for coming into the EU and will the department allow these plants come from the UK if the if the UK are willing to send them to into the EU? Uh, well, Some I plants that are, are, yeah. Is it, sorry, go ahead, Declan. Yeah, so it's plants that are, on, are on, currently on the EU prohibited list. Will they be allowed in from the UK? Uh, no, unfortunately. So plants that can't come in from, yeah, okay, simple enough one. And then a number uh, of questions on machinery, machinery imports, and does somebody need to register to import machinery now? Uh, yes, they do. So okay. if, yeah, if anyone out there is currently importing machinery from another third country, they should be registered with the department and they should be getting the phytosanitary certificate we talked about. If they are intending to import secondhand or use machinery from Great Britain from the 1st of January, yes, they will need to contact us to register and we'll get them registered on the systems. And as you say, Declan, once they, anyone contacts us to register, we'll be able to talk them through and help them through all of the necessary certification and systems. Okay, and we have a number of questions, uh, Shane, coming in from uh, agricultural contractors and dealers wondering about machinery coming in um, firstly to Northern Ireland and then coming south from Northern Ireland. Uh, what's the likelihood of of uh, requirements there or, or what, what's the implications? Uh, well, I suppose uh, all I can really say on that actually is under the terms of the Northern Ireland Protocol, trade between uh, Northern Ireland and Ireland is unaffected. So if they're importing it directly from GB, they will need to register with the department uh, and have the necessary phytosanitary certification. Anything coming from, from Northern Ireland uh, currently uh, can continue to be trade as, traded as it is now. And But if they are importing from GB, I would encourage them to register with the department and uh, to, to contact us and we'll be able to advise them of any, any requirements. Okay, and just one more on the machinery side. Um, as regards a potting machine, maybe it wasn't listed in, in the presentation, but somebody will, wants to bring in a, pot, a potting machine from the UK, um, can they bring it in or does it come under this requirement or where do they get the list? Uh, so if they go to, if they, when you go back into the presentation, that presentation will be posted online after after the webinar and if they want to go into the presentation and just go to the link that i provided that'll bring them to the trader notice and that that trader notice in annex one it gives the full list of the regulated uh, secondhand machinery including the customs code associated with it uh, and generally it's any the, the the customs codes that are listed is any machinery that has been involved in agricultural or horticultural use so a, a potting machine would be would be included in that Okay, thanks for that one. And as Shane said, all today's presentation will go up on, on the website and it'll be there for everyone to to see uh, at a later stage. Um, so then, uh, Shane, on checks itself, on the physical checks you talked about during the presentation, uh, what is the frequency of the physical checks uh, and will they be targeted towards a certain species or, or types of plants? Uh, well, the, the simple answer to that, Declan, is yes, they will. And as I said, it is uh, the, the, the required checks on plants and plant products is laid down in the European legislation that I highlighted in there. So if somebody had was very interested, they could go into the different ones, including the plant health regulation, the official controls regulation, and then the Commission Implementing Directive 2019-2072. So effectively, I suppose just to give a, a small breakdown there, uh, Article 72 of the Plant Health 
uh, regulation requires 100% uh, checks, whereas Article 73 requires 1% checks. So that's a little bit of background for the person asking that question. If they have specific questions around a specific genus or species, they can contact us at plantimports at agriculture.gov.ie and we'll be able to assist them in the query there as well. Okay, and just on that one, Shane, as well, uh, somebody asking here about fees for importing. Uh, is there fees charged to people that, that are importing products? Yes, uh, there are. So, as I said, I didn't give a breakdown of the fees because, again, the fees are dependent on the, the type. So, it could be, you know, it's, it varies from the secondhand machinery to whether it's a tree or whether it's a fruit and so on and so forth. But, again, if they click on the link in the presentation that is in relation to the full procedures for the import of plant and plant products, uh, they will be able to see an example and uh, the full breakdown of fees there and there are fees for a documentary check, an identity check and a physical check. Okay and then there's a number of questions in on the on the soil issue being, being banned. Um, just to go into that in a bit more detail Shane, um, does that mean no soil at all or the ocean nobody grows uh, plants without growing medium or soil? So just to give a bit of background again as to as the ways people can bring in these products and avoid the soil issue? Yeah, uh, so I suppose uh, soil is currently prohibited from, from all third countries and it will become prohibited from the 1st of January uh, 2021. So effectively what it means is, is that the growing medium the, that the plants are attached to cannot be made up of soil or organic matter. It has to be composed entirely of peat or the coconut fibre or the coir as they call it. So one way of doing this, for example, I mean, just to say uh, in relation to bare root plants, as an example, the, the plants can be removed from the soil, the roots can be washed to ensure that they're soil free and those plants could then be imported because it's free of soil. Another method of doing it is that two weeks prior to export, the plants, if they're being grown in soil, can be removed from soil, washed and placed into a new growing medium of peat or coconut fibre as well. Now, again, if people have specific questions got to do with a particular genus or species, if they want more information, they can contact us on the plant imports at agriculture.gov.ie and we'll be able to advise them of the phytosanitary requirements. OK, thanks, Jane. Um, that information on soil seems to be new information to a lot of people on our on our webinar today. Uh, just moving on to, to this inquiry was on cut flowers, but in general, uh, I suppose products coming from the EU, coming across the land bridge to the UK and then across to Ireland, uh, what are the requirements there or what? So uh, I suppose people? that's what we would call uh, phytosanitary transit. So transit is where a product moves from the EU through a third country and back into the EU. And the good news is there that there are no requirements uh, for, for phytosanitary transit. So you can still purchase plants and so on uh, within EU, other EU member states and transport them to Ireland via the UK. And as a result of that, you won't require a phytosanitary certificate. They, those plants can still move on the plant pass, passport system that's currently in existence uh, within, within the EU and member states. OK, thanks, Shane. Um, and uh, one on seeds, seed potatoes. Uh, is it just seed potatoes or are there other seeds that, that can come in? Uh, again, the, yes. Uh, so in relation to the potatoes, where and seed potatoes will be banned from the 1st of January. But there are other seeds that would be allowed in. Uh, which but they would require phytosanitary certification. So again, if somebody has a particular genus or species or even a list of, of genus and species of seeds that they import or currently import if they want to send it on to us at plant imports at agriculture.gov.e and we'll be able to advise them of the phytosanitary certification required. Okay, uh, just one there Shane on the, the time requirement of a notification of, of a product coming in at 24 hours. Uh, this person is questioning, do you know, the UK talk about four hours? Um, is the UK, is the 24 hour set in stone or um, can it be reduced to four hours for A or, or Roro to talk about? Uh, no, so currently uh, in existence we have our, our procedures for other third countries, so current third countries I suppose you'd say, and the requirement is that you need to provide 24 hours notice prior to the import or to the arrival of the consignment and that will apply 
to to plant products, plants and plant products coming from GB uh, from the first of January. The twenty four hour notification period will be will be required. Okay, thanks, Shane. Uh, just one there again on the land bridge about your five hundred being required. So. Um, you're going from out from EU across the UK and back into Ireland. So, will a five cert be required? Uh, no, again, uh, it, it won't be required. So, if the particular consignment is travelling from an EU member state via uh, Great Britain, but coming to Ireland and it travels directly to Ireland. Pardon me. No phytosanitary certificate will be required. One thing I would note that the UK have indicated that they will allow this phytosanitary transit, but they would ask for people just to provide an official declaration. So effectively, if there was a letter from the operator uh, responsible for the consignment, just to state that this particular consignment is in transit for from, for example, France to Ireland, and just state that in in a letter and have that letter uh, or declaration travel with the consignment and that means that there will be no uh, controls carried out on it uh, there will be no controls carried out when it arrives into ireland as it's eu to eu trade uh, and also no phytosanitary certificate will be required it can travel with uh, the the standard plant passport okay and uh, shane can you just give us a little bit of detail on on uh, consignments that are mixed consignments that may be uh, regulated and non-regulated products. So today, product coming in from from outside the EU would would be mainly singular products or singular items. So you know, mixed mixed uh, um, products coming in from the UK that are regulated and non-regulated. How will they be handled, or what's the advice? Hey, so I suppose yeah, you're correct there, Declan. So consignments currently coming from from third countries into into Ireland currently, generally they tend to be one particular species, uh, which which leaves it easy because it's either regulated or not regulated. In terms of the mixed consignments coming from GB after the first of January, yes, uh, there will be requirements there. So as we said already, I've run through what's regulated and what's not regulated. So let's say just to give an example. If we had a, a particular consignment that was made up of apples and bananas, for example, apples are a regulated uh, plant product, whereas bananas are not. So that would mean you need a phytosanitary certificate, but only for the regulated plant products, so only for the apples. You are free to include the non-regulated product in the consignment, but just note that if that particular consignment is chosen, for additional controls outside of the documentary check. So, for example, if it's chosen for an identity or physical check, that the whole consignment will have to be pulled in. And in, in that instance, I would encourage people to familiarise themselves with the regulated plants and plant products and the non-regulated to ensure that the particular consignment is broken down in a way that would assist us in carrying out those checks. So let's say, for example, you would have the non-regulated goods packed in at the back, have the regulated goods at the front, and if, if people become familiar with those requirements, that will help help speed up the process, basically. Okay, thanks, Shane. Uh, one here from a Christmas tree grower, Shane, that um, is um, in Northern Ireland, based in Northern Ireland, this Christmas tree grower, and sending Christmas trees um, south uh, without a phytosanitary cert at, at currently. Um, what's going to change there? And just as well as that, maybe for everybody on the passport issue on Christmas trees and the three meter rule, will that stay in place? Uh, yes. So just to say, as they are currently doing, they would be sending those Christmas trees with with a planned passport with the three meter rule, and that will continue to be in existence. So there will be no requirement for a phytosanitary certificate for sending those Christmas trees from Northern Ireland into Ireland. They can still travel on on the on the planned passport as it does now currently. Okay. Um, just another one here on on frozen products. So if the vegetables are frozen, what's the requirements? So from a phytosanitary uh, viewpoint, we would have no requirements on, on frozen products. So for example, if it's frozen berries and so on, we do not, we are not required to carry out controls on that product because that product is deemed to be processed. So I suppose we're looking at it from a plant health point of view. Now, I would advise those people just to check their products and maybe check with other agencies or indeed other divisions of DAFM, for example, or, or veterinary colleagues and so on, just to ensure that they may have to carry out controls. But from a plant health point of view, we would have no controls to carry out on those particular products. Okay. Um, somebody here are looking at exports, I suppose, not maybe today's call, but we'll address it. Um, so I export vegetable seeds, seeds to the UK. Can I still do so? 
Uh, yes, you can still do so. Now, we are planning a, a webinar on exports uh, in a couple of weeks as well. And uh, Tom uh, from our communications division has kindly allowed us to, to, to do that. And we will send out invites for that as well. But yes, you will still be able to, to, to uh, export seeds. Uh, you may need a phytosanitary certificate depending on the genus and the species. So what I would recommend to that person is if they wanted to contact us on the plant imports at agriculture.gov.ie with a full description of what exactly it is they're exporting and so on, and we'll be able to check it out and make sure that we get them registered for the necessary system if they do need a phytosanitary certificate. Okay, Shane, back to a machinery one. Um, the second hand machinery um, and, the, and the prior notice, does it need the 24 hour notice as well? Yes, it does. All all consignments of regulated plants, plant products, or second-hand machinery are required uh, to give 24 hours pre-notification prior to the shipment to the consignment's arrival. And just one on um, the ISPM 15 and wood packaging. Um, you know, between what's the change there that's going to take place between Ireland, Northern Ireland, and the UK, and how is that going to affect trade? Uh, well, I suppose the, the the first thing to say is that from from air viewpoint, so for any wood packaging material travelling from uh, GB to to Ireland from the first of January will be is required to be ISPM 15 compliant. Uh, trade with Northern Ireland, even in the wood packaging material, is unaffected. So there is no requirement there for ISPM 15 wood packaging material for consignments coming from Northern Ireland to Ireland. And finally, then the UK have have indicated from their side that yes, the ISPM 15 compliance, uh, they want the wood packaging material to be ISPM 15 compliant. However, they're not going to increase, and um, they they don't see an increase in the risk in relation to the trade of of ISPM 15 uh, wood packaging material. Okay, uh, so back to seeds, Shane. Uh, one here on a personal consignment uh, being delivered by post or whatever, going direct to the customer from a UK company to uh, an end user in Ireland. Um, can that still happen or what's the controls there? Uh, yes, uh, that, that can still happen, but the person will need to have a phytosanitary certificate. Now, if it is a personal consignment for personal use, they, they don't need to register with DAFM, but if they are going to grow that seed and sell seed on, for example, saved seed, or if they're going to sell plants or fruits and so on, they would have to register with DAFM. But otherwise, if, if they're not doing that, if it's only for their own use and so on, they, they will need a phytosanitary certificate. Okay, Shane, you've been going very well. So here's one maybe, I don't know, can you answer? Uh, will there be delays at the ports, Shane? Uh, I, I can't answer that, unfortunately. Uh, one thing I can say is that uh, the way businesses and so on can help uh, help themselves and also um, help DAFM, I suppose, is to ensure that they have the, the correct documentation for each one of the consignments and ensure that they have that submitted and, and done correctly. And if you have the correct documentation, that will remove uh, the, the chance of, of, of delay because uh, it means you have all the appropriate documentation submitted that we can conduct our checks as necessary and get your consignment once it's fully compliant, get the consignment out to out to the business or the customer as, as quickly as possible. Okay, um, one there on plant passports, uh, will the EU plant passport be required from Northern Ireland? Uh, yes, so currently for plants and plant products coming from Northern Ireland that require a plant passport, they, they will still be required from the 1st of January. Okay. Um, yes, Shane, we've had a massive response to the, the webinar and your presentation and, and several questions and, and you know, some questions repeated in different areas are asked a different way. Uh, so there's plenty of appetite out there for, for information. And as we said, all this information will go up on our website uh, and will be available after today's webinar. Um, so just no further ado, just thanks to Shane and thanks to Tom in the Communications Division for organising this. And as we said, all the information is going up on the website and uh, if there's anything else that, that maybe has to be addressed say, or addressed fully, uh, just make contact us, contact with us um, at plantimports uh, at agriculture.gov.ie and we will address them then. Um, the, as, as Shane says, we're just 65 days away, so it's, it's well time to be getting our, our things in order and uh, getting prepared for the 1st of January. And either way at this stage, we're going to see change. We're going to see change once it comes to the 1st of January. So thank you for everyone for, for joining us today. And just keep a, an eye out over the next few weeks. Uh, there'll be more of these webinars. Uh, uh, 
and glitches and all that has been cleared up today with, with our first one, myself and Shane's first one. So uh, hopefully the other ones will run smoothly and just watch out for that on the website and on social media as well. So thank you and we'll leave it at that.